I've got an angle DC brush motor from David at CCS. Um, there's no feedback device on it, so it's just a DC brush motor with a 70 to 1 gear ratio on it. Uh, so normally I would use a Junus drive, and if we take a peek at the Junus, you can see it's con configured for a DC brush motor. Um, this is uh, maybe a little bit more than 5 amps for this motor. So I might use a 48 volt supply with a JSP0920. But uh, what I'm going to do is look at it with an Excelnet ADP drive uh, because there could be an opportunity for some feedback on this motor or even on the load. Um, so it's basically the same drive for uh, velocity, estimated velocity mode. I'll hook up the motor power wires to the U and V output and connect 48 volts. No feedback now, but in the future we could use feedback. So maybe a 48 volt supply with a um, ADP 0.9018 or 0.5518. So let's take a look at the um, the motor here. Uh, it's just a DC brush in the angle data sheet, but uh, there's a 70 to 1 gear on here, and it's on the label 70 to 1. Um, it also mentions the uh, GNM. 5440, but it's a 42 volt winding. So I see there is a, a 42 volt winding uh, speed and torque curve. And to me, it looks like uh, you're going to drop off with torque at full speed. So we'll use the uh, 42 volt winding data to get started with here. <clears throat> Um, but uh, in the beginning, we start off with the basic setup, so we'll we'll go through that. It's a brush rotary motor. There's no brake. Uh, there's no feedback, but if we did put an incremental encoder on the motor or on the load, um, we could configure it that way. Uh, no no feedback on the motor, something on the load, or just put a feedback device, an incremental encoder on the motor. Um, Velocity mode, of course, with no feedback, analog command or software programmed, probably analog command. Uh, it's going to use the motor's back EMF, which is based on the good data we put in. And on the motor screen, we get to configure the motor according to the specification. Um, it says uh, 0.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, so I put that in 0.2 E minus 3. And then I double check. Um, as it turns out, that's probably not what they mean. They probably mean E minus 4. So 0.2. My largest size 34 motor doesn't have that much inertia. Uh, we might double it with a gear on there. Uh, but we have a peak torque, 3.8 Newton meters. The Europeans like to use a comma for a decimal point. Uh, there's a stall torque of 0.59. And I'm going to say with 12 volts and 48 volts, I'll have a theoretical 3,800, although I never got to go that fast with this motor because of the gear. Um, the gear acts like a load, uh, so the, the current limits before I can go that fast. Uh, resistance 0.7 ohms, inductance 2 millihenry, just like in their spec sheet. Torque constant, back EMF constant, both these are given. And uh, they look good to me, Newton meters per amp compares to volts per radians per second. 0.117, And then um, given this data, I can calculate the initial tuning parameters. 
and um, gives me about 5 amps. This says 4.7 amps here, 4.75. Um, so just make sure the motor doesn't get hot. So in the in the current loop, we can see um, given the uh, entered parameters, we do get some bandwidth. Looks a little inefficient to me. I like a kilohertz. We only get 300 hertz. So we're going to definitely do some tuning. So I'll use the scope to tune. Um, I'm actually going to set the max velocity limit 10% greater than anything I would ever command. Uh, I'm also going to knock down the acceleration in V-cell. I tested it with my 48 volt supply and I got a little regen back and collapsed my, uh, my, my power supply. It's an XP power, 48 volt, 4 amp. So I don't want to overpower it or get too much regen on it. So as far as the tuning goes, uh, starting with the current loop, uh, auto setup checkbox, apply to the current, hit start, trying to get the, uh, the gain up. So I'll knock up the proportional first. So I like to double it until I see ringing or overshoot. There's wicked overshoot. So cut it in half. That looks pretty good. Um, we're gonna knock up the uh, the integral gain again on the current loop. Uh, if that's too high, I'll see some integral wind up. There's integral wind up. Cut it in half. So that should give me some pretty good current loop bandwidth. I'll check that out again and make sure about a kilohertz current loop bandwidth. Um, what I did notice with the wrong inertia in there, the velocity loop broke into oscillations. So uh, the right value of inertia helps the math model calculate the initial tuning parameters. That's a little excessive. So I'm just going to knock it back down again. So for a DC brush motor, uh, maybe 500 hertz would be sufficient. Um, if you had a uh, brushless motor, maybe more bandwidth, uh, faster responding system, maybe without a, a gear on it, faster response. I just don't like to have more bandwidth than I need, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 500 hertz is good for this. And uh, I'm just going to look at 1 hertz, uh, 330 RPM. Um, I got the velocity parameters cut down, 60 and 60 for X cell and D cell. Uh, that should bring me up to speed fairly quick. Um, auto setup checkbox, one, frequency 1 hertz. So I get a little tiny motion out of this shaft here. 70 to 1 gear, you can barely see it wiggle. But I seem to be getting up to speed. And uh, if my gains are too high, uh, I'll get some ringing. I see a little ringing here already. Um, I'm going to look at it on the way back down, too. So the goal is to get up to speed without too much oscillation. It's not coming from the integral. A little bit of buzz on the uh, proportional gain. So I'm going to cut it back down. So here's the second sweep. Yeah, so I'm going to say the gain was too high for the uh, proportional. And so now I'm going to try to use a little integral to get it up to speed. Might get a little integrator overshoot here. Um, 
So we'll take a look with a longer trace time. I'm going to jog it. Um, I've never set the integral past the VP point. But on the control panel, there's a jog. And we'll do 500 RPM. And so that sounds nice. Uh, we can, can see the motor shaft spin. The jog. So we'll try a higher speed, 1,000 RPM. This is an estimated velocity. So 1, 1,000, 3, 2,000. So two seconds at uh, 70 RPM. Uh, 70 to 1 gear ratio. So that would be 70 revs at the motor times 60. So one rev a second would be 4,000. That's kind of beyond uh the rating of this this motor here so this one or two thousand seems like a, a good speed i'm going to run the scope trace over a longer period of time and we'll just do uh, rising edge i don't know 500 rpm on channel one limited velocity we'll take a look at the current uh, voltage bus and voltage terminal servo, just to see what goes on there with the motor. So I got about five amps already, you can see here in the control panel. Um, it's an estimated speed, 1,000, 2,000. So that, that may actually be 2,000 RPM. I don't have any encoder on the motor shaft here, so I can't measure it. Um, so that, that's probably as fast as we want to go. It's hitting about 20 volts, uh, maybe a little bit more, um, for the back EMF. I'll try a little faster here. This will probably be 24 volts if it's supposed to go 3,000. Um, the current's going to fold back here after a while. But with intermittent duty, uh, we should be able to maintain that that speed. And it used approaching 30 volts. Uh, we'll try the 2,000. But like the graph said for the speed torque, uh, the 100% speed reduces torque. Uh, conversely, if you already have a load on it, like gear ratio, it's going to require uh, more torque than what the motor is rated for. Um, so I, I'd say, yeah, we're we're hitting um, sufficient uh, speeds, probably going faster than 2,000 RPMs. So, so yeah, the, the real, I'm not measuring it, it's estimated, but it's based on, on the data we provide. So we could, uh, pump up the, the back EMF to get something a little more proximate at a set point. But uh, it's pretty good. So let's let's save this to, to flash here. And then of course, uh, I like to save a motor file. Yeah, it says 42 volt on there. So save to disk. Angle, motor, and then dash 70 for a gear ratio. So that's it. Uh, tuning and um, without a feedback device, open loop estimated velocity control with uh, an angle motor. Thanks for watching.